What's going on everybody? Victor here with a brand new video and today I really want to talk about one of the standout performances that I saw personally in UFC 275 and the guy I'm talking about is Jake Matthews, Celtic Kid. He's currently 18 and 5 in the UFC. He's been with the company since 2014 which means in two more years he will have had 10 years with the MMA's top promotion in the world. He made his debut in 2014 at the age of 19. He's currently 27. He'll be 28 soon. And that's just something extremely noteworthy to take note of, obviously. And his performance at UFC 275 against Andre Fialiu, who's currently 16-5 in the UFC, was something short of magical. It was absolutely astonishing. And he looked like... He looked like Mike Tyson in there. He looked like a, a professional boxer in there with his striking accolades and putting it on full display. And when he went in there, it looked like he couldn't miss a single beat. It looked like he didn't miss a single shot. And every single time that Andre and Jake came in striking distance within one another, it's just, it was a crisp boxing and the striking of Jake Matthews. He was hitting him in the body, he was hitting him to the face. He was throwing combinations. It wasn't ever a single punch. It wasn't just a one-two combination. He was throwing the three fours. He was throwing the 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 six one twos. It was just it was astonishing. And uh, Jake Matthews, his hand speed, it was absolutely fast. It was lightning fast. And uh, every single time he hit a strike, Andre barely had any chance to counterattack because Jake would get his combinations in and bring his hands back to his guard, back to his protection. That way Andre wouldn't be able to counterattack and hit him hard. And uh, it just looked like Andre Fialiu was off his game. He had uh, basically four fights in the last four months, which means that he's been in constant training camp over and over and over again. He's, he's been training day in and day out over the past couple of months. He's barely been resting. He's barely been giving his body a break. And if there's one thing about our bodies, you can compare our bodies to cars. Now, the reason why we warm up our cars is so they can be able to perform at max peak. That way they'll be able to run a little bit smoother to get us to our destinations. And when we get to our destination, we turn off our car for a reason. We don't leave it running while we're in the restaurant. We don't leave it running while we're at the store. We don't leave it running while we're in school. The reason B is because we don't want the life expectancy of our car. We don't want the gas to run out, you know? That means it won't be performing to this max peak because it will have burned itself out. Now the human body, if you're currently going at max speed for three to four months in training camp and you're not letting your body have the break that it needs, then it's, it's eventually going to it's eventually going to break down. The wear and tear from the last previous fights that Andre Fiali has had over the last couple of months eventually caught up to him and his body wasn't at max peak performance. Not giving anything away from Jack Matthews' performance because he was astonishing. He didn't miss a beat. His, stri his striking was absolutely amazing. His hand speed was crazy and the power of his strikes put Fiali down the majority of the time every single time he connected on the dot. But Fiali really did himself dirty fighting four times in four months and uh, that's something you have to blame with the manager. Obviously, there is one individual in your career that makes all the moves, that makes your schedule, that makes your future happen. And the person that plans your future is your manager. He is the one that makes the fights happen. He's the one that talks with the UFC press. He's the one that is supposed to get you towards a shot at the title. That is his job. And he did not do his job when, when it came to managing Andre, um, Andre Fialiu. And it just, it just wasn't a good look. If you're a manager, you want to make sure you space these fights out. You don't want your fighter fighting over and over and over again in case of Andre's situation. And that really did him dirty. And Jake just looked like he was the fresher fighter in there. And he was the faster fighter. He was the stronger fighter. And he was just the fighter with the better fighter IQ at the very end of the day. And as a result, he's able to get that finish in the very early seconds of the second round. Like I said, his shots just kept on connecting. It barely looked like he missed any single shots at all. And this is just the evolution of Jake Matthews. Obviously, the last time he fought was last year in 2021 against Sean Brady. And that was a pretty big loss in his career. He was just overwhelmed the whole entire time. He didn't look like he hit 
any single beat at all. He was overwhelmed. It looked like he was scared. And as a result, he got finished via submission. But Sean Brady is just the type of individual that is an up-and-comer in the UFC. He's currently the boogeyman of the welterweight division on the outside looking in. And he's currently been looking for a fight for a while, but no one's been able to accept just because of how talented and skilled of a fighter that he is and how dangerous he is at the very end of the day. And Jake Matthews was able to experience that firsthand. And he learned he learned from that loss. That loss was an experienced quality loss because Sean Brady is just that type of fighter that has a bright future ahead of him and the opponents that he beats there's no shame in that loss whatsoever and Jake Matthews was able to bounce back in a big way and knock out Andre Fialu in the UFC Singapore and Singapore just happening to be one of those countries that's close to Australia there's a huge Australian contingency a huge Aussie contingency in that crowd and you could really hear it throughout the whole entire night and when he knocked out Andre Fialio you could really hear the Australian crowd roar for him and he's able to feed off that energy the whole entire time and if I'm the UFC I'm definitely trying to put Jake Matthews this new and improved and evolved version of Jake Matthews especially when it comes to his striking because we didn't really see that much ground game whatsoever. That was Andre Fialio's biggest mistake. He should have tried to grapple. He should have tried to do some dirty boxing against the fence while having grappled Jake Matthews or try to go in for some takedowns, whether it was a double leg or a single leg or an Imanari roll. He should have tried to go for some sort of takedown because he just wasn't having any type of success, zero success on the feet whatsoever. And that was his downfall, not trying to change the game plan, believing that his striking was enough to be able to knock out Jake Matthews, who was streaking the whole entire seven, seven or eight minutes of that fight that it lasted, and it was just a failure. But Jake Matthews, like I said, from the UFC, I'm definitely trying to put him up, to put him up against an opponent that is ranked at least ranked 15, the ranked 10, someone with a number next to their name, and he says that he wants to be on that Paris card. He, his fellow countryman Robert Whitaker is going to be fighting on the co-main or the main event of that night and I know for a fact that Jake Matthews wants to come back pretty fast in September and take a fight on that card and he definitely deserves to do that because he barely took any damage in that fight against Andre Fialio and if he does get granted that fight then I can't wait to see what version he shows up with because during that post fight interview with Daniel Cormier he specifically said that before his fight with Andre Fialio I'd only seen 50% of him 50% now the version of Jake Matthews that I saw at UFC 275, I believe that I was looking at 95% of the skills that he was able to bring to the table during that night and the skills that he can bring to the table in the near future as well, no matter who he fights in that UFC welterweight division, which is considered one of the most stacked divisions in the whole UFC company and not only just the UFC, but any company, any UFC company around the world as we speak. So Jake Matthews, just congratulations to you, hands out to you, and everything you've been able to do, especially during your time away from the Octagon and the skills that you've been able to sharpen lately. And it definitely showed, it was definitely on display in UFC 275 against Andre Fialio, and you definitely deserve that knockout. And I can't wait to see what he does in the near future. Hopefully, UFC can be able to grant him a spot on the UFC Paris card so he can be a part of history. It's going to be UFC's first fight card in the country of France and also in the city of Paris as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. What do you guys think of the evolution of Jake Matthews and what he brought to the table, UFC 275, and who would you guys like to see him fight next? Appreciate you guys for watching the video, and stay safe, stay blessed, and later.